checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. So we cut back inside the building. Well, hey, fair credit, Evil Uno cut an awesome promo. Evil Uno cut a great promo, vowing to battle the uh, bad guys, whatever the hell they are. Top Flight and Action and Dreddy cut a good promo, too. They issue a challenge for the trio's titles for collision. So I noticed it here, and they pointed out later, everyone's pairing up in groups of three. So we have, like, eight challengers for the trio's titles, zero challengers for John Moxley in the world title. And we don't know who's challenging for the tag titles because it was not made clear. No. There's a lot. There's so much left on queer. Jay White versus Christian Cage. Why are these men fighting? I can tell you. Okay, please. Were you not paying attention? I was listening. Well, you apparently weren't because Excalibur spent the first two minutes of this match mm -hmm. in intricate detail finally explaining why these two men are fighting. He said it started with a trio's title feud. And after that, Christian interfered in the Owen match, and he cost Jay White the match with Hangman in a match where Jay also got injured. Okay. So Jay wants revenge on Christian, and he wants revenge on Hangman. I, I picked up the injury part because they said hang, uh, Jay White was out 94 days. But the fact happened. is they did not mention it until the match started. No. Last week, Jay White just said there were two men, yes. and he refused to name the other men. Yeah. Nobody named the other man. And I asked the chat, and everybody had a different answer about who that man was. Why they couldn't have just said it last week yeah. and told us what happened? And, and better yet, shown us footage of what happened? 15 seconds of Christian Cage interfering in a match? No, we had to have poor Excalibur have to spend the first two minutes of this match explaining everything to us. So the match was great. Uh, we had the Patriarchy outsmarting the Bang Bang Gang and getting them ejected. But they just dragged Nick Wayne away with them. And Shayna followed, so it's one on one. Jay White is so awesome at doing a babyface match without pandering to the crowd or selling forever and begging for sympathy. He's just super aggressive and super confident and super likable in, dare I say, a rakish kind of way. So having this awesome match, Cage preps for the spear, and then I assume somebody jumped the gun too early here. Twice. Came. Yeah. Twice. Well, I'm assuming Kip Sabian got there too early. Well, Kip Sabian came out first, mm -hmm. and apparently he thought that was when he was supposed to interfere, but it wasn't, right. so he had to do it again later. So he left. Well, I'm assuming Hangman's cue was get in there after Kip Sabian. Yeah, so Hangman comes out from under the ring. Mm -hmm. He's about to crawl in the ring, and he notices, oh, shit. I'm early. And so he reverses direction yes. and just lays on the ground. Yes. Fans are laughing because... He's just laying there doing the evil eye, the crazy eyes. You've never. This is the most cartoony thing AEW has ever done. Is Hangman's crazy eyes looking back and forth, like did he see me? So yeah, that was silly. And then Saban distracts again. Hangman hits the buckshot, and Cage wins. It was very weird, but that's what happened. So Hangman is still making silly faces. Christian Cage wins here. He still has his guaranteed title shot. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell his end game is. I'm pretty sure he's not going to cash in on John Moxley. I'm pretty confident in that. Well, he ain't going to be successful. And if he does, not well, much. whoever he cashes in on, I'm pretty sure he won't be successful. My guess is, you mentioned how they hit pause sometimes. They're going to wait until the time is right, and Christian Cage will try to cash in, and Adam Copeland will return and screw him. Yes, yes. I presume that's what's going to happen. Who the hell knows how long it's going to take? Now, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good match. Pretty good match. This Kip Sabian thing, I mean, maybe it'll work in the end, but you know what it reminds me of? Ridge Holland. You're taking a guy and inserting him into a group, but nobody cares about the guy whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? It's like when Wheeler ended up joining the BCC again, it's like we all cared about Wheeler because Wheeler was an important part of the storyline. He didn't want to be with him initially. You know, the whole Brian Danielson thing. And uh, that's another one, by the way, that I could talk about. You realize that when Wheeler turned on Brian Danielson, the week prior on Dynamite, there was a giant BCC beatdown of Wheeler Yuta, and Brian Danielson just like he left him. He was he was busy brawling with Moxie or whatever, but like he just left the guy high and dry to get killed, and that actually explains why Wheeler Yuta turned on Brian Danielson. But they've never mentioned that, never been part of a promo. They didn't mention Brian at all on this show to even mention any of that. So it's like, there, there is, in fact, so much left unsaid on this show. 
Yeah. And I believe the problem is that Tony Khan remembers every last single thing that ever happened in AEW, and his presumption is you do too. Therefore, he doesn't bother explaining anything. There's, there's never recaps. There's been more in the past month or so. That's true, but they, they need more still. We need more recaps. Mm -hmm. We need more announcers telling us what's going on yep. and why. Yep. Yep. We need all of that. I don't want to hear that that makes it more WWE. It makes it more pro wrestling promotion. Yes. Okay? Promotion. It's the in reason, the word. It's in the name. The reason WWE does most of what they do not all of it, like not being able to say hospital is just Vince McMahon madness, but the reason that they promote matches in advance and they recap things that happen and they make past events seem important to make future events seem important, that's not a WWE thing. That's a, this is the promotion of professional wrestling thing. They do it in New Japan. They do it in TNA. Mm -hmm. They do it in every wrestling company in the world. It is a pro wrestling thing to do recaps and to hammer things home into you, there's a reason it's called a promotion, and the guy running it is called a promoter. Promote your shit. AW doesn't do that. They presume you know. We shot this angle, you're going to remember. We shot this angle with Stokely on Rampage, you're going to remember. Even though nobody watches Rampage, they just need to say more and hammer more of it home so that people remember. You can't literally run a promotion just for the the AEW, what do they call them, sickos? Yeah. If you run a promotion just for the sickos, you're going to do 400,000 viewers eventually. Like, you got to run a promotion for everybody. The sickos can be the ones that buy tickets first and spend the most money on the merchandise and, like, are the complete diehards. But, like, you got to promote for everybody. Then you'll have a lot of viewers. Anyway. So when... Wrestle Dream ended. Christ, you know how the Lord of the Rings, each of those opened? With a fucking recap of the previous movie. Yeah. Who the fuck do you think went to Two Towers without watching Fellowship of the Ring? I got an idea. I'm going to go to just the second movie. I'm not going to watch the first one. I'm going to go to the second one. Well, if you happen to only go to the second one, they fucking recapped the first one. In a movie! It's not a Vince McMahon thing. Did Vince McMahon write the fucking Lord of the Rings? No. No. I know this one. Yeah, he didn't. Chimney Christmas. Anyway. So when Wrestle Dream ended, we had four young baby faces who looked like they were getting elevated to major programs. You had, uh, I, I figured it was going to be Darby Allen uh, and Wheeler Yuta first because Wheeler turned on Darby at Wrestle Dream. Orange Cassidy would be the first guy to challenge John Mox because Orange has actually beaten him for a title before. Uh, you had Hook, who uh, had a, apparently as an issue with Christian Cage is on the horizon, although who knows now. Yeah, and what happened to Hook? He was all angry about who killed his dad. He was nowhere to be seen on this show. Never disappeared. Does he not care anymore? Because yes, and, and, he did say he'd find the person on Saturday, and he didn't. Did he give up? Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. And Garcia has an issue with uh, uh, Perry, which they did follow up on. That's one of four. They actually followed up on, on the four words team. So there's still a whole lot of, I don't know what the hell is going on here. And I thought they did a very poor job of making what happened at Russell Dream seem that important. Well, that's what you got to do as a promoter. Yeah. We also watched WWE NXT on CW. That's probably the name. I, I like this show. show. I thought it was a fun show. October 15th, 2024. Back at the Performance Center, and the crowd's very, very happy about that. They recapped everything that happened in the St. Louis show. I hate to interrupt. So apparently they did an online exclusive. Oh, no. Saying that Hook found out who the attacker was and would confront them on Wednesday. Why do I find out about this stuff on the chat? <laughs> Why the fuck was this not on television? 30 this hours after the This was a storyline for like three or four straight shows. Who killed Taz? Hook is looking for them. He doesn't find him at the pay-per-view, and then the follow-up is an online exclusive? Whatever. That is another issue. It's not enough to watch the A show and the B show and the C show. You also must be permanently online to follow what is happening. I'm not. Sometimes. I'm just We're not. online more than most, and we're still often confused. Yes. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.